Isometric training, AKA static holds. You engage and recruit more muscle fibers, you get your stabilizers involved, and you increase your mind-body connection. What's up everybody? Coach RJ from www.fitclub.fit, home of the belly burn. So static hold workouts are a great way to get a crazy pump, but they also build muscle in a non-traditional way without any resistance. Now caution, you could pass out, get a cramp, or you could get really sore. When I was younger, I used to pose like crazy. I loved the pumps I would get after a workout in front of the mirror. And bodybuilders do a lot of this. When they get on stage, they're flexing and they're holding for an extended period of time. Now, if you look at them, or if you've ever been on stage, or if you've ever held the tightest flex that you've ever done, you'll feel like your arms are gonna give out, you'll start to sweat, and it feels like you've done a workout. And so today, I'm gonna give you a workout plan that is 100% focused on the static hold to engage more muscle fibers, to increase the stabilization, but also increase the mind-body connection. So today, I brought the new coach, Jamie, along with me, and we're gonna focus on this isometric workouts. The reason why I'm getting Jamie involved is because as you can see, she's got a cast. So we wanna be able to build her upper body without actually putting any resistance into that hand. So the first exercise I wanna teach you, Jamie, is called the plank hold or the isometric vacuum squeeze. Now, a lot of bodybuilders use this as a form to get a flatter stomach, but also to increase the amount of core. So what we wanna do with the abs is you wanna take the stomach, okay? So you have your stomach out and then you wanna bring it in and you wanna squeeze it in towards the belly button. So bring the belly button in and up towards the spine and then flex. Try doing that, okay? So we're gonna do this for 10 seconds, ready? So the belly button goes in, ready? In and up and flex, ready? 10. Nine, flex, eight, seven, six, five, squeeze, four, three, two, one. Good. How does that feel? Great. That feels like at least 30 to 40 seconds of doing crunches. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down into a plank and we're gonna hold the exact same thing. So let's get you down to a plank position. So for you guys at home, what you're gonna do is you got your standard plank, so don't squeeze. Now what I want you to try doing is talking through this. Okay, so don't squeeze, you're in a plank, easy. Okay, now for 10 seconds, let's engage the core. There you go, I can feel the squeeze. Now 10, nine, eight, seven, squeeze, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, all right, let's get you back onto your feet. So that's the static hold for your abs. Jamie, how does that feel? Tight, hard, like I just did some sit-ups. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so now let's get into your upper body. The upper body, for you, since you have a cast, we're gonna do without going into a push-up hold, but we're gonna do both. I'll show the push-up hold, and then I'm gonna first show you how to do the static squeeze. So this one, I like to do, the isometrics will work into the direction, whatever angle. So this is the only downside to doing isometrics. So if you just did it here, then you're only engaging the muscle fibers that are into that position. But you gotta remember, the chest moves in a full range, right? When we do a chest press, we bring the elbows down. When we do a pec fly, we open them up. So if I just flexed here, then I'm missing all the muscle fibers into here. Like you, if you go like here and then you squeeze, you can't even really feel the chest engage until you get into this area. So you don't wanna just work here, you don't wanna work here. So what I want you to do is focus on working it through the entire range. So you're gonna start here and you're gonna flex the muscles that are into here. So you can see my veins are popping, okay? So we're gonna go in here and you're gonna bring it in. All the way in, all the way out for 10 seconds. All right, so hands here, good. Okay, so basically you're gonna meet my resistance. Okay, ready, go, push, 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 push. Now go all the way through, now keep that same resistance, yeah. Bring it right together so you can see the real pec engagement, you can see the arms. Three, two, one. And did you feel the, the muscle fibers yeah. all the way through? All the way through. So that's a great way that we're gonna engage. So you might look kind of ridiculous at the gym, <laughs> but if you're at Fit Club, people will understand that it's part of the routine. So what you wanna do is go five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and you're gonna do that for 30 seconds. So that's how we engage the pecs on the upper body. So this next exercise, we're gonna focus on everything. So get you to turn around. We're gonna focus on everything that's happening across this back. You can actually do this on the your stomach. So we're gonna do the opposite, okay? So this one, you're going to start here and you're gonna really focus on engaging your triceps, okay? So now push your elbows into my hands. I keep going. So that's the full range of elbows. Push, 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 push. There you go, good. Now come back up. Okay, now same thing, ready, go. See, and you can see all the different muscle fibers. Okay, go back. Good, so here, initially, shoulder blades, and then it kicks all the way into the rear delts. Go again. So we got the shoulder blades, 
right? You can see the back muscles here. And then as she gets into that further range, you get into the delts. One more time. That's it, so there you go. Five, four, three, two, good. All right, so that's your pronated T. So we're gonna get all through the back side of the arms because you're flexing your tricep, okay? Imagine you're pushing against an imaginary wall. Then you're gonna get the initial part, actually, you can feel that engaging into your shoulder blades. And then as you open up the arms, you're gonna get further into the rear delts. So that's called a pronated T. You can do that on the ground where you're just lifting up or exactly like we did, just standing up. So if you're doing, yeah, if you're doing a chest routine, so let's say you're in a class and you're, you know, it's a military press. Well, instead of doing military press, you can do your chest. It'll still work your shoulders. Now let's say they're doing a row. Well, then we get into there. Let's say they're doing like a resisted ab or a hanging ab, something where you, or an ab wheel where you can't use your arm. That's when you'd use the core. Now we're gonna simulate a military press. So now we're gonna focus more onto the fibers of the, of the upper chest. We're gonna focus on the fibers into the anterior delts. So basically we're doing a military press. Now what's gonna happen though, is you're gonna feel a squeeze and engagement into the middle of your back. So we're gonna start there and then you're gonna keep your shoulder blades together and you're just gonna press all the way up. You're gonna feel that all the way through the forearm, all the way to the front delts and you're gonna feel that all the way in through your traps and your middle of your back. So let's get you to turn around. So we're gonna do a military press, okay? So here, bring it down. Okay, now push your elbows into my hands. Okay, good. Okay, hold there, hold there. Now bring your shoulder blades together, squeeze back. Good, so right away you can see that. Okay, breathe, okay. Okay, now squeeze and engage, and then bring your hands and press straight up towards the ceiling. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Now you can see the traps, engage, keep going, get your hands all the way up together. Good, and then come back down and breathe. Okay, ready? So we're gonna engage right away. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Push, 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 push. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good, so you can see the traps, okay? So we're gonna start in the, low, the, the middle of the back here, and then you can see the traps aren't engaged until the traps kick in right here. So that's gonna be your pronated front press or simulated military press to focus on the shoulders. So when it comes to the lower body, when I personally do squats or any types of lunges, a lot of times I'm gonna go into a lower resistance, but I'm gonna focus more on mind, body, muscular connection so that I can work on the fine muscles in the quad. So like even me just doing this right here, you can see like my calves are getting engaged. Look at the blood flow that's going in there. You can see the veins popping. So right away, I'm trying to engage my quad. So I'm, I'm focusing right here. These are the main muscles when it comes to anything that crosses into the knee that you wanna focus on. So I'm gonna plant my feet and I'm just gonna do a slow squat, okay? And as you go down, you can see the veins, right? You can see the blood flow that's going in there. And then as you come up, you wanna see that the muscles are going like this. So what you're doing is what we were talking about at the beginning is that you're increasing the muscular activity by slowing it down. Don't rush through your squats to do squats thinking you're gonna gain a booty. You need to focus on which muscles you're engaging. So in this case, it's gonna be my quads, okay? For the glutes, it's more about up and squeezing the butt together. And then as you go down, you can't really engage the glutes because glutes do hip extension, okay? They don't lower you down into a squat, they do a hip extension. So what happens is right now with the squeeze, I'm focusing on my quad muscles, okay? And then as I come up, I'm focusing on the quad muscles, okay? So we're focusing onto the thighs. So I'm gonna get you to do the same thing. You're gonna do a squat. Better if you have shorts, okay? Because then you're gonna be able to see which muscles that you're gonna try and recruit. But in your case, you're gonna feel and just plant your feet, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna squat down slowly and I'm gonna push you and you gotta plant. Good, so what's happening here when I push her, she's actually engaging this glute to create stabilization. Now come back up, squeeze, see that? Don't give up on that. In this one, you can actually get the down and the up. Okay, so let's go down for about seven. One, two, squeeze, three, four, five, six, slow up. See, you can feel, you hear that? All the little muscles and tendons, they're all snapping. Okay, let's go two more. Go again, three, two, one, back up, squeeze, three, two, one, good. So you can feel, right? So the next time that you do squats or lunges, instead of just picking up a heavy weight and going through the motions, try slowing it down and seeing the muscle engagement, right? Like try and wear shorts and you'll see as you come up, right? And the more you do it, the more you're gonna see your muscles are twingling. And that's great because instead of just working, when you do a jump, you, you recruit fewer, bigger muscles because it's short, it needs as big as muscles as possible in the shortest period of time. But when you go slow, and even if you wanna go heavy resistance, that's fine, but when you go slow, you actually recruit more fine detailed muscles. So what's happening, instead of 
you know, hitting a hammer to a brick, you're actually chiseling away and creating details, right? So if you want to sculpt a sculpture out of rock, you wouldn't just hammer, 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 you'd be chiseling. And that's what this is working on is chiseling. Last one, now we've got the front of the quads. Everybody wants to get the ass. Everybody wants to get great hamstrings. So on this one, I'm gonna get you on your back. So we're gonna do a bridge, okay? Now bridges, I always like the heels up, okay? So as soon as you put the heels up, then this becomes the main fulcrum, meaning it's, the, it's just used as a stability point, okay? What we're gonna focus on is everything through the hamstrings and everything through the glute. So Jamie, what I want you to do is lift up and squeeze. Okay, where do you feel that? Do you feel it glute, hamstrings, where do you feel it more? Glute. Okay, go back down. Now extend the legs. Okay, lift them slightly, bend the knees slightly, right there. Now same thing. Hamstrings. Good. So the closer the heels are to the body, the more focal it is onto, it moves up your body. So as your heels go down, so does the center of gravity. Does that make sense? So as the heels come up, it's just like the more you bring your hands together, the more you work your inner chest. The further it is, the further it works into the, 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 the center point. So this is the center point right here. It shifts over here. So then once I bring it in here, now the center point shifts here. As I bring it in, it shifts into here. Same thing with your heels. So when it comes to these isometric workouts, we wanna make sure that we're attacking that entire backside. So you could just say, I wanna focus on glutes and have your heels towards your butt and then you can focus on driving and squeezing, right? Exactly like that. Again, it's not fast. It's all about the slow contraction. But here, you actually wanna make sure that you're squeezing. Ready? Three, two, breathe, hold it at the top. And then give me a three at the top, at the top. Three, two. Now, what about when you go down? Where do you feel that? Hamstrings. Hamstrings. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. The glutes aren't always working right. on the up and down. So as you go down, it's your hamstrings that are working. Here, it's your glutes lifting your hip extension, but as you go down, it's your hamstrings cause, causing the contraction. So there's a lot of misconceptions out there and YouTubers that put a bunch of stuff that aren't working your glutes. They just, you feel it in your glutes because they're secondary, but they're not primary. So now let's go down. Okay, slight bend. Now drive up. Okay, hamstrings. Yeah. Okay, hold. Three, now where? Glutes. Glutes, exactly, because now you're stabilizing to so the center point. Now lower. Where do you feel that? glutes exactly so this is your hip bridges so you want to do a set there so ready go up three two three and then breathe two and then back down two good now bring your heels slightly and it's a game of inches up three two pause two down two switch now bring it up bring it up there you go good ready? three two pause two down two Rest. Now let's go all the way up. There you go. Ready? Three, two, three, two, down, two, down, two. You might have felt that last one more in your back. Yes. Yeah. So again, heels higher up, center of gravity shifts up. Heels higher down, center of gravity shifts down. So that's a great way. If you really want to get butt engagement, you can still put a weight on your hips, but honestly, you're not going to need it. As Jamie can see, she's breathing heavy. It's like she put a, you know, a 95 pound dumbbell on her hips. You don't need to lift heavy in order to get glute engagement. It's all about the muscle mind connection. So there we have it guys, static hold, isometric training, great way for mind body connection, more muscle connection. It also works on stabilizers because it works all in and around that capsule to squeeze your knees, your hips, whatever it is. So I'm Coach RJ, this is Coach Jamie from? www.fitclub.fit. How many W's is that? We'll count it out at the end, guys. We'll see you on the next video. <laughs> I, love you, w, w, w. I think it was four. <laughs>